talking about the Polaris Project, which is an anti-human trafficking organization. So this project was created in 2002 by two Brown students, um, and it's targeted at global and sex and labor trafficking. So these two students are named um, Catherine Sean and Derek Ellerman. <laughs> um, they were inspired because of a nearby brothel that human trafficking was going on in, specifically sex trafficking, um, and so they were inspired to create this. Catherine Chan actually is now the senior supervisor in human trafficking at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, um, and she's also named one of America or one of the world's 50 most influential women by Women's Day magazine in 2010. So some facts about human trafficking: uh, about 25 million people are affected by it currently. It is the largest criminal industry worldwide. Um, the sex trafficking industry alone is worth $32 billion, yes, $32 billion. Um, sex traffickers and human traffickers prey on the socially and economically vulnerable to get their way, get their, yeah. So <laughs> some of the goals that this organization has, their main one is to focus on the structures that allow human trafficking to happen in the first place and breaking that down and finding the problems within larger systemic um, organizations. Um, they also work to train people on how to spot human trafficking and how to stop it when it's occurring. Um, and they also work downstream to help victims and deter crime from happening. So how they do this, they use a lot of data that they are able to have access to. Um, they operate to end the market-based phenomenon of trafficking. Um, because it is a very low risk and high profit industry. Um, yeah. So what, how, what they use to do this is data. Um, they have access to a lot of data because they run the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Um, they also use partnerships with larger businesses and government officials. Um, and they use a global network that they have created over the past 18 years. <clears throat> so far, Polaris has worked to pass a lot of bills at state and national levels. So far, it's over 18. Um, they have also expanded the human, the National Human and Trafficking um, Resource Center to include slavery, modern day slavery. They have built a comprehensive live statistics map across the United States for human trafficking. And they have also completed hundreds of training for people to learn about trafficking. The thing that makes Polaris different is that they use the sphere of influence that they have, which is very large, and this helps them stand out from other anti-trafficking nonprofits because those other nonprofits are smaller scale and don't have the resources that Polaris has. Um, there's no way that small nonprofits and in local industries are going to be able to solve this. <coughs> so a lot of recognition has been given to Polaris, including awards from Google, and they have also received high ratings um, from nonprofit information databases such as GuideStar, which is the largest one. Um, so someone who was a victim of human trafficking that Polaris helped set free was Fairness Lupenga. She was brought from a different country to work in a household cleaning and she was stuck with doing far more than she signed up for, including childcare, cooking, plus a commercial cleaning business on top of that. Um, she was paid four cents an hour, which was obviously below the wage she was promised, and she was abused by her employer, um, both verbally and physically. So she was able to escape this by finding the passport that they had hidden and escaping when they were out of the house. Um, and because of Polaris, she is now able to advocate for other people who are in similar situations to her. <coughs> some of the people that Polaris work with, some of the groups that they work with, include the um, National Trafficking Hotline, which they actually staff. They pay for the employees. They also partner with the International Justice Mission and Truckers Against Trafficking. 
In 2018, they released a report that looked at a lot of specific large companies' roles in human trafficking. One of the main companies that responded to this was Delta Airlines, who took note of their how they contribute to this issue and decided to donate millions of dollars to helping stop it and also decided to um, fund trainings for their employees. So now it's very safe in terms of human trafficking on Delta flights. So while Polaris has done a lot of good and will continue to do a lot of good, there are downsides to everything. The main downside of this organization is that they put um, consensual sex workers at risk. Um, this group of people are already at risk because of the stigmatization about their field of work. Um, and so by creating an accessible way for people to report human trafficking and have it responded to, this also creates opportunities for people to report sex work. And as a result of that, a lot of sex workers are incriminated for just doing their job. They also have released some misleading information and some false facts about trafficking. In conclusion, this organization, while it has its flaws, has done more good than harm. And um, by targeting the large systemic flaws, they completely reframe the way that a lot of people are thinking about sex trafficking and human trafficking and a lot, how a lot of people are responding to that. Um, they actually, I think that they have the potential because of their scale to put a large dent in human trafficking, if not end it, um, and that is why they are a change maker. Thank you.